Hello friends. So in our last three lectures, we saw the we saw what transformational gener generative grammar is. In first lecture, you remember we were talking about one of the properties of human languages that is creativity, and that we know languages use a recursive mechanism for producing with the finite set of rules, infinite number of sentences, well-formed sentences for that matter. We saw the recursive mechanism working, concrete nouns modified by PP. These things we have already seen. In our second lecture we saw that this, and there also we saw generative. What is the meaning of generative? Generative means predicting. In the second lecture we saw what is transformation, that is changing one form of this ascendance to another form. The example is active passive relationship. An active sentence is taken and you apply some rules. The active sentence is our input, then you have got the output as the passive sentence. The third one we saw, you remember, we were talking about two structures of the same sentence, that is a deep structure and then a surface structure. And now you have got the first hand information about a deep structure from the mouth of John Chomsky himself. Yes, says the definition given by him of deep structure is uh, the deep structure of a sentence is the abstract underlying form which determines the meaning of the sentence. So the Deep structure gives the meaning. Okay, the semantic content. If you want a bigger word, you can say semantic content. So in sentence, the surface structure of a sentence is the actual organization of the physical signal into phrases of varying size, into words of varying various categories with certain particles, inflectional arrangement, and so on. So we saw yesterday. When we say be past, be past, then that will become was. See, be present will become is. See it. We also saw uh, past be, past bring, past bring will become bring past, and that will become brought. P R I U G T T. So that is. So this level is past bring. That level is. Deep structure, and then this is with the infection, we change in the form, and that becomes a surface structure. That is what we saw yesterday. Okay, another definition is by Grover Hudson a deep structure, that is a simple one. A deep structure is the underlying form of a sentence before rules like auxiliary inversion, psi is relation, the subject auxiliary inversion, he is eating, is he eating, is an example for that or WH funding apply. WH funding means for the questions you have to, WH questions you have to bring the WH word to the front of the sentence, beginning of the sentence. If you say that, no, he eats a mango. Now you are asked to make a WH question, then what will you do? You will circle mango and instead of that you will put what. So he eats mango, it become he eats what. Now you cannot uh, have a sentence like that, so you have to take it and uh, that is called a question word switch rule. So when you use the question word switch rule, he is he eating what will become what and also sai, what is he eating. So for a WH question, you, read, you need two, uh, two uh, rules you have to apply. First you have to do it, what you have to do is you have to uh, apply the sai rule. Sai means subject or solely version. And then you have to front it. The WH word has to be fronted. Okay, if you have written this down, I will just uh, take the, I will show you an example, okay? And I think it is time for you to write this down. Once again, I will read, so by the time you will be able to write it. The deep structure of a sentence is the abstract underlying form which determines the meaning of a sentence. The surface structure of a sentence is the actual organization of the physical signal in the phrases of varying size, in the words of various categories, 
with certain particles in a flexional arrangement and so on. And uh, Robert Hudson says, a deep structure is the underlying form of a sinus before roots like auxiliary inversion and WH friendly operate. So what is auxiliary uh, uh, inversion and WH friendly? Now I will give you an example by working on a sentence. So you have got a, a regularity sentence like this, he is eating mango, okay? He is, he is eating mango. Or you want orange? No, mango will do. Today, today mango will do. <laughs> Tomorrow we will take orange. Okay. So, when you say that he is eating mango, first rule that you have to apply is Sai. By Sai, Sai means uh, subject to auxiliary. That is, is he eating mango? Now, we want this as an answer, so the appropriate question will now that will become, is he eating what? Now you have to, this is the bridge word. You have to friend it, friending, that means you have to bring it here. What is he eating? This will be the W's question. Understood. So, I already told you there is nothing new or invention or any such thing. But what do you know? Your knowledge is made explicit. Understand? Okay. Now, what are the salient features of this grammar? Because we have seen traditional grammar, we have seen structural or descriptive grammar, we have also seen what? Uh, Flesh structural grammar. Now, the, the features or special features of this grammar is, first is the architecture. You can see, architecture. What is the architecture of Architecture of language model. Architecture of language model is deep structure, deep structure, and surface structure. Just now we have seen that surface structure. This is the architecture. Means the building, the 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 way it is built. Understand? Now this is second point. You know this. This is not a theory of performance. This is a theory of competence. How you perform language is not at all an aspect of this grammar. We are not concerned about that at all. We are concerned about your competence. So this is a theory of theory of language health. That is enough, I think. Competence. Competence rather than rather than performance. So that is a second feature of this video. Perform, performance. I'm not writing, I should not write shorthand, no? Although I know shorthand, I don't want to write it here because you don't know. No? Again, you can you take that? You want to know, uh, you want to test my knowledge of shorthand, you get that. See, if you want to say, uh, if you want to say, go, you know, you just try like this. This is go. So. If you write a thinner stop, this is come. Go will be this. This is go. A thick, a thick stroke like this. Understand? This, this is come. Okay. I come. So, I come. And it's not our subject. Really. So that is after some time I plan to, I plan to publish a whole course in, in uh, linguistics, uh, not linguistics, but uh, but um, shorthand, big man shorthand, after completing this. Okay, the third is, the third point to notice, there is an assumption. The assumption is that human brain is hardwired for the acquisition of language. That is the assumption. It's built on an assumption. The assumption is, Human, human brain, human brain is hardwired, hardwired for, for the acquisition of language, human brain. When animals are not uh, using language like, our, like we use, because their brain is not hardwired, understand, genetically not equipped. 
so to say. Hardware means you can say genetically equipped. If you have genetically equipped the slots in your brain, only then you can acquire language. Understand? Yeah. And the fourth point is you have got a uh, point we have already seen creativity. Creativity. Creativity means a finite set of rules. Finite set of rules, but infinite number of sentences. Infinite number of sentences. That is by means of recursion. Recursion. We have seen now recursion is repeating the same structure again and again. That is we can see. And number five, you can see it is search for language universals. Language universals. That is that is the claim is that or trying to find out whether all the languages are cut from the same growth. Whether all the languages are cut from the same growth. You understand that? Means then there will be no quarrel in my language, your language, because all already we know in the European uh, family of languages, almost all the languages in Europe and also in India, they have descended from Indo-European family of languages. Other families, other major families you can have, say like a Semitic family, isn't it? Or the Chinese. Chinese is not included in Indo-European family. The Semitic, that is the Jewish, Hebrew, Syriac and so on, not included in Indo-European. Already in most of the languages in the world, they, they, have, they have descended from Indo Proto-Indo-European. That is, you have studied it in history of the English language, isn't it? Yes. Now, he says that uh, another six, sixth point is, it is not, it is neither pathological nor descriptive. Pathological. Pathology means finding fault. It is not pathological. Pathology no, means sickness. Or, no, no, neither nor uh, descriptive. Doesn't describe, you know. Or you can say neither prescriptive nor descriptive. Prescriptive means laying down rules. You have to use like this. There should be no preposition at the end of the sentence. It is me is wrong. It is I is correct because they have all the rules of Greek and the Latin grammar. There is invasion of Greek and Latin grammar. Rules of Greek and Latin grammar. And that's why descriptive. Of course, they are describing synchronic study. You can say synchronic. Synchronic means the given language you are describing. Synchronic. Sim means together. Chrono means time. So synchronic means together with the time. Doesn't matter. Sin. Sin means of course together. Sin. Sin. Chronic. Chronos. Chronos means time. Chronos once upon a time watch is known as chronometer. Chronometer, that is uh, your measuring time, understand? So it is neither this. So, once again, the architecture of the language is based on deep structure and surface structure. So, theory of language is competence, not performance. Assumption, assumption is that it's genetically, we are genetically prone, human brain. Then, creativity is the property of the language. Language universals means all languages, they have, they have been cut from the same cloth because human brain is hardwired and pathological means uh, neither pathological nor they are descriptive means neither is it prescriptive prescribing rules like a doctor prescribes medicine for you know if you go to a doctor he will prescribe medicine means rules order he orders so it's not like that but not, neither is it a prescription understand a few more uh, Few more points we have to see. It is non empiricist. Seventh is that. It is non empiricist. Empiricist. That means not, you don't experiment. There is no experiment done here. It all comes from your certain assumptions. Not, uh, empiricism means what you observe uh, actually what is happening and then you uh, draw conclusions. Here is no such thing. 
uh, you are just uh, uh, unfolding certain uh, rules, just like this, just like that. Explaining rules, understand? Yes. Then, uh, eighth, uh, eighth point where you have a vision series, it is syntax is at the center. Syntax. Syntax is at the center of the theory. Syntax means what? Sentence. It all begins with this, not phrases now. We start with the S because up to the phrase structure grammar, the phrase, phrase and the running after phrase, we say goodbye to that. Then comes sentence. So the sentence is the structure. I means syntax is the at the center of the structure. You start like this now. S means sentence. Sentence is N B auxiliary V P. We say like that. this is the sentence. Auxiliary means, you know, carry stance is an obligatory element and then you have got model, perfect or, or progressive as optional elements. Model, model is optional, then uh, perfect is optional, aspects, there are, there are two aspects. Why do you say simple persons and simple persons? Because simple means no aspect, neither is perfect nor it is progressive. Simple, but present continuous means there is an aspect. Present perfect perfect means there is an aspect. This way. So a minus a non-aspect sentence or a structure is simple structure. He goes to Chennai. Simple. He is going. Aspect is there. What is the aspect? There is a continuous aspect. He has gone. There is an aspect that is perfect. So this, the syntax is at this end. That's it. And then you can see a language comes closer to computer. That's another digital. Digital. This language goes becomes digital. It's easy to work with the digital means computers. This language and the, the structure and all the, you can display. It's easy. It becomes easy. Yes. And then you have got you have got the tenth point is this well defined this well defined uh, rules of anal analytic principles yes well defined analytic principles just now uh, we saw one isn't it psi rule then question well switch rule then nb switch rule NB1 becomes NB2, NB2 becomes NB1, so that very clear, it's no doubt about it, let me say. When, I, when you convert a active sentence into passive sentence, it's very clear, that's something, yeah. So I think with this, this session of, that is 1957 model of uh, uh, syntax, that is transformational generative grammar, uh, we can almost say goodbye to this. So there are four lectures now. We have seen that first one we saw. What is meant by transformation? What is generative? Generative means predict. That's the thing. Predict. Then focus is on explaining. Not what you have done, how you have done, why you have done like right? that's the thing. How why exercise and economy? See, explain. Explicate, you can say explain. Make things clearer to you. Understand? Now you will like this transformational generative grammar. First time when you hear this name, probably you think, oh, it's a big thing. It's nothing. It's a lot of things are there. Now what we have to do is, next is syntactic aspects of the theory of syntax. That there is a model. You see that? Simple. If you know this model, the other one models are simple. And then you have got a uh, uh, standard uh, aspects of the theory of uh, uh, syntax is uh, the next, uh, that is published in 1967. Aspect model, they say. Aspect model. Aspect model. So that's 1965. Uh, and this is uh, 1957, this is uh, 1965. Then uh, the, the first one was 1957, isn't it? And in syntactic structures. Syntactic structures. 
the list 1957. So this structure Now this is the first model. We have, we have been considering the first model so far in four lectures. And finally, if you want to sum up, we can say just there are three components. What are the components? Very important. First one is base. The base is PSR. What is PSR? Phrase structure rules. Base is PSR. So you have got the base. From PSR we go to the next one. What is the next one? What is the next one? Remember? That is phrase where we will generate deep structures. Yes. Deep structure. Isn't it? Deep structure. And then you have got the next is more deep structure and then you have got the uh, morphophonemic. Morphophonemic. Morphophonemic is phonetic form. On a tick form. So this, this structure, and then by applying transformational rule, that is transformation. This structure, transformation, transformational, transformational rules. So you have got to this structure and the, uh, the surface structure, no? structure. And then finally you have got phonetic form. Phonetic means the shape. The shape. The shape of uh, the, what you see, the surface surface. So the second is component we can say, instead of writing deep structure and others, transformational rules. Second component is transformational rules. So that is clear writing. And finally we have got a, a phonetic form, you get the the actual form of the sentence as you see it. Hmm. You like it? Very good. So then that case we will see in the next few classes we will have the aspect model. Then we will also see other standard theory. Aspect model is called standard theory. Then you will find the revised standard theory. Are they? So these things are simple. And finally you will find the GB. GB means uh, government and binding. Not the government, the other, as you understand, constitution and politics and so on, but the government means how the different parts of the sentence are governed as like a C command, theta, theta rule and C command and things like that. The case, uh, case grammar, see that, such kind of things, simple. We have already told that these are known to you. Just what we are doing is we are making things explicit. I hope that you will continue enjoying this transformational generative grammar and uh, we both will enjoy. Not only you, I, I also. I also. I like this, you like this. Okay. So there is a kind of equivalence between you and me. Huh? I like it, you like it. So we go to Fine. So tell them bye.